Hey guys, I got to talk last time, but some of y'all weren't here. Um, I've gone through this process three times. It's been impactful every time that I've done it, but every time that I've done it, I've ended up a puddle. So we just wanted to prepare you guys that get, getting into our past, getting in the best parts of our past, the worst parts of our past is messy, it's hard, and it can be painful. And so we are aware of that. We are aware of what we're inviting you into. We're not doing it haphazardly. We're inviting you into something that we've gone through. And so we wanted to let you know that we have prayer team members here. We have a plethora of counselors here. And we have priests. Um, and I'm also willing to help. So if at any point you're getting overwhelmed, feel free to step out. Um, if you need help, let your group member know, your leader know. Um, pick your head up and we'll be looking for you. Um, but there's nothing to be ashamed of. Um, God redeems all kinds of stories. That's part of what makes him so beautiful. And so um, there's no bad story here. And so if you need any help, if you need a moment, take it. And that's just fine. Uh, two other things. When it's time to, to break up, um, y'all can spread out. If you're more comfortable spreading out, if that gives you time to write the card, like the post-its without people watching you, spread out. That's fine. And then um, we want to reiterate that you do not have to share. So this is work for you, and we hope that once you do it, you'll be open to sharing. We think that's good news. We think that's good, but you will not be required to. And so and even if you, you can share some of it and not all of it. So this is meant to be a blessing to you, and um, when it starts rising up in your body that it's not a blessing, talk to us, okay? I'm going to invite Kathy up. Thanks for taking over, Kathy. Well, we left off last week transferring our yellow slips that were deemed painful to a pink slip. I want y'all to take note, there are three tables over here that are wide open. If you need space, the work that you're doing tonight is going to be opening that piece of cardboard. You need a little elbow room. If you, you're not going to, you're not going to converse with your group tonight beyond dinner. So I encourage you to find your elbow room. This table has space. We can put some stuff on chairs um, and make a space. So let's take a minute and let everybody find a good spot. There's a table in the middle of the room right here. Jesse, would you point out that table that's empty? Okay, thank you so much. I want you all to know, if this is the first time you've come into this, you weren't here lap two weeks ago, um, we've met as a group just one time, and we started this life mapping process, and it was recorded via video. And so um, you can go on YouTube. If you need that address specifically and can't find it yourself, just call Jesse. She'll get it to you. I will ask this. Would everybody take the tall signs down for me? Because I like to see. Yeah, thank you. Huge, huge difference. Thank you. So, um, as we begin, I would like to offer that big picture that um, both Jesse and Dustin talked about 
in this way. When we take time to reflect on our history, our past, it allows us room spiritually and emotionally to take a look at how God knit us together, how we interacted with our family, how we became who we were, who we are. What are the things that formed us? I love that the word of God is living and active and sharper than any double-edged sword. And I love that his word divides bone from marrow. That fine, that delicate of an instrument that he uses to help us see what is in our lives that formed us that needs to be transformed. So my heart in this, as with the other staff, is that we have an opportunity in a very different creative way to look at our story as a whole and ask the Lord, what formed me? Where do I need transformation? And that's what the end game is always here. Transformation. That our hearts would look more like him. So, as we were looking at last night, you tra- I mean, last two weeks ago, you were transferring your yellow slips that were pain-oriented to pink. And what we're going to do next is take a look on your, in your notes on page 8. And what I'd like you to do is begin to think through the turning points in your life. And turning points are just what they say. I turned and went a different direction. And what caused this to be a turning point could be some defining moment in your life. It could be something that happened that was interrupted. It could be someone intervened in your life in a way that changed your life. Um, somehow a decision was made and life changed and there was a turning point. So I'd like you to take a minute and write your turning points here. Some of them may already be in your yellow slips, which is great. But I would like us to specifically think about those things. So take a minute and ask the Lord, what are the turning points in my life?
In case some of you are getting stuck, I thought I'd share some of mine. For me, a turning point, an obvious one might maybe to you all, would be when I came to Christ in faith by grace. That was a definitive turning moment that I no longer was trying to earn God's love, but I received his love, and how I lived changed, but more importantly, why I lived changed. Um, another one was uh, the discipleship I received from three individuals while I was in college. My brother, his now wife, and then a gal who was in a campus ministry that I participated in. If it had not been for their ability to bring the word to life and how it mattered on my day-to-day life, I, I just would never have understood that the word of God was to transform me. They lived it, the word, and they invited me into the word. Um, Those relationships were turning points for me. Another turning point was um, a move we made to Wisconsin. Um, I'm from New Orleans, tropical New Orleans, and Wisconsin is way more Um, Icelandic. (laughs) And so um, I went kicking and screaming. My poor husband um, had a job offer. He took it. And the obedience, the absolute, I had to lay down my life for the better of our family and obey God and go to Wisconsin. And That obedience came with some suffering, but I learned a lot about obedience in that place. And so what I left here in roots and people, we left from here, we ended up coming back, obviously, was just a really painful thing for me. God met me there. He provided friends. But I, I, I had to release something. That was a turning point in my life. So begin to consider what are other turning points in your life that obedience, failure, people investing in you, job changes. You know, there are many turning points. Some are very helpful. Some are very positive. Some could have been hard. What I'd like you to know is all of this work is not just in the confines of we're doing this right now and you can't touch something from last week. If while you're doing this, another yellow sticky note pops in your mind, write it down. This is, there's, there's no confined work to this time frame. So it's all a work in progress. Um, The next thing I would like to do is have you look at the next page where we're we're looking at the timeline, what it actually looked like. At the top post-it notes, take one of your light blues and put it there, just as a memory of that's what's going to go there. And then at the bottom, the light green ones are going to go there just so you have a frame of reference of how you use those. The light blue, let me show you on the large, on the large one. I know this is hard to see. I should have had a slide. What, the way the timeline is set up is going to be chronologically beginning on the left side, top to bottom, 
move up to the top again, top to bottom, move up to the top again, top to bottom, okay? So at the top will be our chapter titles in light blue and in light green, I'll explain what's going to go there in a little bit. We just need place markers. So this is what I'd like you to do. Open up your poster board and put five to seven chapter markers at the top. It just, it just gives you uh, place markers, and you may have less than that. I know Cliff will probably just have three or four. I have seven. It doesn't matter. Some of us who've lived longer have more. So just take your blue, light blue post-it notes and, and just boundary the top and boundary the bottom with light green for me. Does anybody have any questions? And people who've done this before, your colors are different because 3M does not keep up with us. <laughs> they make new colors every year. Okay, so once you have finished bordering your poster board, I would like you to take all of your yellow and pink slips and begin to put them in chronological order. Remember, top to bottom when you run out of room, go back to the top and start another row. Yes, the, but we're not gonna, they are significant, but we're not gonna touch that yet. We're just gonna get them in chronological order. So, no, not, do not write your chapters now. Just get it in chronological order, and then you'll move your blue slips as you create chapters next. Yeah. I'm sorry. When, when that, chronologically, when that came about in your life, when that idea occurred to you. So Beth asked a good question. What if a yellow slip is an idea or a, something that is not an event that happens or when you met a person. Well, that idea had to come in your world at some point. Try to remember when that chronologically happened. If it was at birth, in your upbringing, a value or an idea that came then, that, then it would go somewhere in there. In your heritage, yes. Uh -huh. You don't have to. Yes. Okay. You don't need to. Okay, great question. I was asked, the yellow slips aren't in categories as I was walking through them. Correct. They do not stay in categories. They move to chronological placement. I'm going, it's okay. Okay, so those chapters are just placeholders for space up there. We're going to move those blue pieces around when we get to that part. I just needed you to put a placeholder in there. That's all for now. Anybody else? I'm happy to clarify because I know I need, I need to clarify some things sometimes. No, you, if, you're, if you've transferred yellow to pink, you can trash your yellows and just hold the pinks and put those in chronological order. Great question. Yeah, it's a little easier to come back here. I put the cheat sheet in. This 
you want to, you want to, us to take, put them on chronological or just stack them chronologically? You can go ahead and put them chronologically in your rows. That'll just help you. Um, in the process. That's the um, post it so there's Yes. There's correct. And and if you've moved some so much that it's lost its sticky, just when we're all done, you can put a fresh one in its place. I've done that for years. If you were not here last week, would you raise your hand or two weeks ago? Okay. 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 If you go back here. You mean to my yellows? Yeah. Okay. I wrote on Mary's yellow. You're going to follow these prompts for your yellows. And if you need help. I'm Kathy. Hi. Hi, I'm Katie. Hi, Katie. Okay, if you go back to this page, this is basically what I was prompting people to do. And you can just start your yellows. Okay. And then you can go back and watch the video that you need more help. Who else was not here? Okay, you got it. Okay. Did you watch the video by any chance? Okay. Okay. Well, let me show you here. This is basically the prompts I was giving for the yellows. So if you want to start making little yellow slips of the th these type of things, okay? I just have like my parent, my mm -hmm. that goes in the mm -hmm. when I was born. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. That Spanish. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. those are not really events. Just it doesn't have to be an event. It's the things that make yeah. you you. Okay. Okay. Super. Yeah. Thank you. You're good. <laughs> okay. So if you you did the yellows at home. Okay. You're good. You've done this before. Right, I got one. I you got one. Problem. Oh, one. Yeah, you can do that next time. <laughs> so can I go on and get prepared? Yes. Right here are the prompts that I used. So you just okay. go through each of these, okay? Okay. To prompt yourself. Okay. Okay. Uh huh. What, you, we'll do that tonight. Okay. You'll learn that tonight. <laughs> Anybody else not here last week? Okay, or two weeks ago.
Okay, I'm going to talk a little bit about what we're doing next for those of you who have completed your chronological order. For those who haven't, listen up. You can go back to your chronological ordering in a minute. But this is how we're going to look at chapters. Um, there's a variety of filters you can use for your chaptering. It can be grouped by age, 1 to 10, 10 to, you know, or teenage years. You can do it in, in age increments. You can do it in um, chapters around your school life. You can choose any way you would like to do your chapters. I know uh, the guy originally who did, I participated in his conference when he did this, he was a baseball fanatic, so he had baseball themes. His, name, his titles of his chapters were, you know, associated with baseball. I think in music, I think in songs, my chapter titles are lines from songs that are reflective of that season of my life. So there's no limit to the variety of ways that we can title our chapters. But what I'd like you to do is clump your chronological orders in some type of chaptering that makes sense to you. It doesn't have to make sense to me. It has to make sense to you. Any questions? Okay, so once you have chronologically ordered your yellow slips, clump them into chapters, then take one of those blue post-its and put it over that chapter. And if right now you just want to put chapter 1, 2, 3, 4, and then later fill in, you can. But uh, you want your chapters in order tonight.
If you have completed your chronological order, would you raise your hand? Just, I'm just trying to see how far we are here. Okay. I'm going to give you guys um, about five more minutes to do that work, and then we're going to move on to the next thing. And that, this is something you can just take home and continue to massage and make it look like you want it to look. As you're working, I want to remind you that this is a tool. It's not exacting. There's no, you're not going to get something wrong. This is a tool to help you. I'm helping you organize thoughts. But I don't want you to fret, oh, I've got this wrong. I didn't do this right. I don't have enough chapters. I don't have enough this. I don't have enough that. I didn't do this. Don't fret about that. If you have a question, if something's not making sense, feel free to raise your hand. Jesse or I will come and help answer any question you may have. Okay, the next thing I'd like you to take out are the purple post-it notes. And the work that we did when we started, those turning points are going to go on the purple post-it notes. So if it's a yellow or ready, just transfer it to a purple. If it's not in your chronological order, you're going to write what you wrote on page eight, one per turning point, and just put it on a purple, and then fit it in your chronological order. Any questions? Yes. Say it again. Okay. So, the first work we did when we came in tonight was looking on page 8 at the bottom at our turning points. Some of those may already be yellow slips for you or pink slips. Turn them to purple if they're already a slip. If not, write them on purple and add them in.
I would make it purple. That, that's fine. Mm-hmm. So we're going to move on to the next thing. Anything that you weren't able to finish up to this point, you can take home and finish. Again, it's a work in progress. And um, you're welcome to call me, text me for any clarifying questions. I'm happy to help. Um, reach out to Jesse or Dustin. Um, so the next thing we're going to look at are the green post-its that are at the bottom. What these are for are as you look at that chapter of, of your life, what were the deposits made? What were the things entrusted to you in that time? And I'm going to give you an example of, of mine first chapter of my life, my dad, my, one of my pink slips that, that um, is, I, I didn't realize this was even something in my life till I did this process, so that's why I love this process. When I was in seventh grade, I got a D in science, and my dad walked in my room, this was in the 70s, and I had a little poster on my wall, a little graphic, but uh, a quote from E.E. E. Cummings that said, sometimes I sit and thinks, and sometimes I just sit. And I thought, oh, I love that, you know. That's me. Well, my dad walked in, and he said, you know what that ought to say? Sometimes I sit and thinks, and sometimes I just sit on my butt. And I, he called me lazy. He didn't ask me, what happened? What don't you understand? How can I help you? He labeled me lazy. So what was entrusted to me is don't let anyone catch you being lazy. 
well, that behavior can be seen in my life that I never even realized was a pattern until I remembered, because the Lord brought it to mind, when my dad said that, that was so hurtful. So that's an entrustment that's on the hard side. Another entrustment was family matters. My extended families, my immediate family, we were taught family matters, and I was given so many great values in intimacy with extended family and the support of a lot of family. And so these entrustments are going to be noted down at the bottom. And this might take a little more time than just right here. Or you may look at that chapter and you're like, oh, yeah, I know what happened there. This is good. This, yeah, this is here. This is here. And it might come to you real quickly. But if it doesn't, that's okay. Throughout the week, you have two weeks before Dustin teaches again, you can be thinking through those. But those entrustments are important for us to notice. These are insights God's revealed about you, what you value, what you desire about himself. So for a long time, I desired that nobody think I was lazy. And so I managed a lot of my life living at that value. And then God began to heal that. And I don't fear so much being perceived as lazy. Okay, we are hitting the end of the time frame we have, and so I want to ask you to consider pulling this out, 
couple of times before we get back together again. And just ask the Lord, is there anything here you want me to adjust? Is there anything you want me to add? Is there anything that I haven't seen you want me to see? And the Spirit of God, who is our counselor, will bring that to mind. I trust that. I trust that he'll do that. If you struggle to name some things and you really want to name things, reach out to close friends who know you, who love you, and just say, what, do you, what would you call this? Like, this was the chapter of my life, and I, I, don't, I can't see what was really going on there. Can you help me see? Um, I, I think that's the gift of community. Then lastly, if you look in your bag, you don't have to pull these out, there are these stickers, multiple color stickers. The colors don't mean anything. It's just a marker. On page 26... If you would just take a sticker or draw a sticker at the top, put the word sticker in it if you don't want to pull yours out, I would like you, if you would like to investigate more about the effect of certain things in your life, what, what you would call that, these are great descriptors. They're called process items. So I would tell you that on my sticker where I have the word Wisconsin, I told you that story tonight, I put a little sticker with an OC on that post-it note. So I go back and I'm telling my story and I look and I say, Those, that was a moment which God test my response to reveal the truth when costly, confusing, or even contradictory. Like that was a moment that God tested my desire to be obedient. And I love when I, I saw this sentence because it put language to something that happened that I didn't have the language for. But I knew that was a turning point in my life. And I, I just think these can be helpful to put words and language towards something that we may not know. We just know something was different after that. So if you could do that work of uh, page 26 while we're gone, and you just take that circle dot, stick it on the post-it note if you can, fit it. If not, just tear it in half and put half of the circle on there. And just put the initials of what you would call that. On there, and then you can refer back to it as needed. I just think it's illuminating to do that for ourselves. Okay, I'm going to pray, and then parents, if you get your children, that would be a blessing to those helpers down there. God, we thank you. What a gift it is to be with one another. We continue to say to you, your will be done. And we want your will to be done in our lives on earth as it is in heaven. And I pray whatever that will is for each of us in this process, nothing would thwart it. I pray that you would bring holy moments to each person in this room as they reflect on their life for your purpose of what formed them, how you were present with them all of their life, and how you will continue to transform each of us as we lay our lives open to you. I thank you for those who prepared the food, for those who worked hard to give us great seating, I thank you and I pray that you would protect their bodies as they take down and set up again in two weeks. We love and appreciate all who have served us because we know they serve you. In Jesus' name, amen. Next week is B Week. So if you're doing B Week as a group, you can organize that. And we'll see you in two weeks. <laughs>